to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Hello and thank you very much for joining me in the studio today where we paint away the stress of everyday life here in Wales. So what I wanted to do uh, today, which is a Friday, because I don't know what's going to come up um, from week to week. So I, I think it's a bit of a surprise in this uncertain time we find ourselves. So I was looking through my archives again and I come across a video which I did in um, 2013. 2013. And um, this is before I had my studio. This is when I was sitting in an old shed that was dripping on my head. And it, oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. But I still managed to make some great content in the very early years of YouTube. So without further ado, I'm going to take you to myself in the shed and show you um, what I've got planned in this lesson. And I'm going to talk over it now as well um, with the knowledge that I've gained in all these years. So I hope you enjoy. It's a sneaky day off today. It's raining. Um, so I can't work today in my business. Um, I've recently taken fishing back up. So I'll show you a little version uh, on the river in, in this video because uh, this is hopefully going on YouTube. Um, I put the background in, blocked in the main um, fish, the carp, common carp. I'm not sure whether I'll do a common carp and a mirror carp, I haven't decided yet. So you can see, um, in 2013 I was quite an avid fisherman and um, this is a, a local um, river that's not too far away from my home and don't worry i always put the fish back <laughs> but um, i haven't done that for years now i'll be honest with you but it was a fun time and um, as you can see it might be raining there because it always is in wales so i wasn't gonna take you on to um a painting um which um I've done these uh, two common carp. Um, so underwater, a fantastic thing to be able to paint. And with like like everything else, I started with some gesso and um, I put some green wash uh, of color to make up the water and a couple of flicks of, um, I think it must have been something like a hooker's green. Um, to show those reeds under the water, which there's a lot of foliage under there. Um, to blocked in the, the carp um, with some raw sienna, burnt umber, Van Dyke brown. And the main fish that I'm currently working on, as you can see, um, I've done basically that. So I'm just building up some scales now. So what I've done is I've lightened some burnt umber with some titanium white. Um, to get the highlights because I put some shadows in around the eyes as you can see and I've concentrated really concentrated on that eye spend a lot of time on that eye this painting took me about three or four days if I remember rightly so it's important that you you spend the time that's necessary and just to the left hand side of the canvas you can see a little bit of reference that I'm using so after putting the, the, the edges of the scales in place with some of that um, lightened burnt umber, um, I'm going in now and darkening the scales with a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of a touch of black and some, um, I think it must have been something like a di dioxazine purple, just to give that warmth to it. Nothing too harsh, but trying to keep those colors accurate. And what you've got to try and do in a painting like this is you need a focal point. That's, that's important, is getting a, a, a focal point of a painting. Um, and that's why I've got the, the carp's head slightly turned. The, the carp in the background is going to be slightly blurrier. But I needed a nice, sharp 
focus on the eye. So it's not so much what you do in the, the whole painting, it's more about that focus that you'll get when you're looking at something or a study like this. So I, I focused in to the, the, the face of the fish and the eye is the most focal point. And your eye goes in to that area and then travels around the painting. And this is an important thing. Always have that, that travel through a painting. So what I'm doing now is continuing to warm up and darken up certain areas, re-highlighting the areas that I, I think that are gonna maybe catch the light. And don't forget, light in the water is coming from above. So everything underneath could be slightly darker. So un uh, underneath the fish is gonna be slightly darker. So you're gonna need to think about glint. Now the eye is again, I need to think about glint in the eye. The eye could be pulling in a little bit of blue. Now, you, I'm gonna be placing in the shadow, as I said underneath the fish and that is done very very thin wash using the medium mix if you've got any or even just a little bit of water but try not to over thin your paint if you can help it so as i progress i'm thinking about shadow and depth and light taking my attention to the second fish now as you can see i'm going to slightly build that up with a couple of mid-tones and a few highlights with that nice raw sienna, some burnt sienna with a little bit of white, some burnt ember and raw sienna mixed, maybe just a little touch of yellow here and there. Again with the burnt ember and titanium white I've mixed up this little highlight colour where I'm going to put these scales in place. So it's not so much about the amount of scales, but you've got to get that realistic feel about the painting. So when you get to um, certain skill levels, you'll find that painting is a lot more enjoyable um, as you progress. And it's important to make mistakes throughout paintings. Because if you don't make mistakes, how are you going to improve? So never beat yourself up over a little mistake. Again, concentrating slightly on that eye then. Remembering that the bottom of the fish is going to be slightly darker. Trying to get a little bit of a, a light effect there. I've also already put a shadow underneath that second fish. Now already those fish are starting to sit up off the riverbed or the lake bed. And now they look as if they're just floating, which is an important thing. So I just changed the camera angle. I'm putting in a bit of warmth now into the fish. A little bit of raw sienna glazed over. In other words, a very thin layer of paint. And again, this is where the medium mix comes into play because you can thin your acrylics as thin as you want. And again, another great thing that you can do with acrylics is dry them instantly. Because if I was painting this in oil painting, then I would have to wait for certain parts to dry and they could take a good couple of weeks. Now you can use water mixable oil paints, which are brilliant things. So give them a try, but you can also use oil into that as well but don't try to mix oil and water together in the same way so you can't use a um an oil thinning agent then to bit it simple um, then add water to it you either use water mixable oils with water or oil water mixable oils with oils so i've decided to put another carp in just to give it a little bit of depth and they are bottom feeders. Actually, their their mouths come out like little suckers. They come out like this. They come out like that, and they and they suck up all the stuff like this, like a little hoover on the, on the riverbed. 
or the lake bed. As you can see, he's going down to have his dinner. <laughs> so he's going to be behind a few um, reeds and things, and what I've decided to do then is mix a couple of different pinky red, a um, little bit of vermilion, some raw sienna, some um, burnt umber, lightened with titanium white to get that like he's been sucking on 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 the lake bed or the river bed and stirring up all that earth and soil where he's been sucking along looking for his dinner and as you can see that's the cloud that he's generating as he's hoovering along the lake bed and you might see in the distance maybe one or two or even three more little tiny fish just to give it depth again you can see the underpainting process on this car, which is what I've done on the two main features. And you can see the brush angles are not being painted flat, but they've been painted in a curved way to give that curved appearance. And trust me, that does help. Again, I'm not worried too much about too much detail in this particular fish because he's a little bit further away. So we need to give that 3D effect. We are, we are, we are masters at illu of illusion as artists. And this is what you've got to try and do is play with light, play with dark, play with um, fuzziness. <laughs> That's a Clive thing. So you need to give it a little bit of depth, a few bubbles, because obviously he's sucking on the ground and it's going to generate a few bubbles. So you need to think of all these things when you're looking at a painting or um, when you're studying something to copy or you're going around the museums which you'll be able to do hopefully soon and studying other artists as well so don't just look at a painting and think that's pretty that's nice look at how the brush strokes have been used and look at how you think that paint has been applied and all these things will help you because don't forget a painting should always be viewed at least six feet away so don't get confused by putting in too much detail because your eye can make up detail that's not there again on this fish that I'm doing in say the midground very few easy touches few lines here and there just to make it look as if there's a lot more detail there than there should be building up that that detail that's important like to take this opportunity to ask you to subscribe and comment on the channel it's important that that subscription button is pressed it doesn't cost you anything it just helps the channel grow and helps me bring these type of videos to a worldwide audience and that's important because it's always good to share with others so building on the foreground now, you can see that I've put a bit of reeds in there. I put a bit of rock and sand. I put a few little um, carp feed, what they call boilies, by the way, because they're boiled and they're made into little balls like that, which the carp absolutely love. And I'm just building up the color now, just building that front up, adding some highlights where the twinkling of the light is permeant in through the water and just hitting on the lake bed as you can see I'm replicating some ripples above with some highlights below and this will all come together into a fantastic painting and I've done a lot of um, underwater paintings over the years and uh, I forget sometimes that I've got a lot of this in the archive and I, and, I, and I hope that you're learning something from just watching me paint 
So I put a bit of highlight on the top of the fish now, just to lift that out of the canvas. There we are. Very, very poorly um, edited, this video. But as I said, it was from 2013 when I first started YouTube. I used to do a lot of wildlife photography, uh, photography and um, paintings at the time. So I'm just highlighting the highlights just to try and get that to stand out. Put a few light rays in. Can you see those against the fish? With well, that light is just coming through. The background fish now are nice and fuzzy. Just showing you around the canvas because I'm coming to the end of this broadcast and um, I want to thank you very much for spending some time with me today and um, please like, comment, to share and subscribe as I said and I it's hope that's helped you out a little bit so the so subscription button's just below friend. there's another video just to the side so please check it out and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.